Hello, in this video we're going to talk about hernia, specifically inguinal hernia. We're going to look at the signs and symptoms, the risk factors, and I guess um, what we, what, how it actually happens and how do, how do we differentiate between the different types of inguinal hernias. So hernia itself is uh, defined as a protrusion, bulge, or projection of an organ or part of an organ through the body wall that normally contains it. And there are different types of hernias and it can be divided mainly into internal and external. We will mainly be talking about external hernias. Now external hernias include inguinal hernia which is the most common of all these which is 80%. Then you have incisional hernia 10%, femoral hernia 5%, umbilical hernia 4%, uh, epigastric hernia less than one and then you have others. So the inguinal hernia and the femoral hernia are known together as groin hernias because they occur around the groin area. So let us actually talk about the inguinal hernia because that's, that's what we're going to talk about mainly here because it is the most common. So what we actually see in an inguinal hernia is uh, the intestine, which is the organ, actually bulging out or pushing out of the wall that normally contains it, which is the abdominal wall in this case. So the abdominal wall is actually um, comprised of, from the outside, the skin, the subcutaneous, and then you have um, the abdominal muscles. And there are three abdominal muscles here. From the outside, it's the external oblique, the internal oblique, and then you have the transvis abdominis. So again, an inguinal hernia is essentially the bulge or protrusion of an organ, this being the intestine, through the wall that normally contains it, which is the um, abdominal wall. So what are some signs and symptoms of someone who, who has um, an inguinal hernia? Well, obviously it depends on the severity and how much it's actually bulging out and if it's strangulated. But the signs and symptoms um, altogether are, obviously there's a visible lump, that's a sign, a heavy discomfort around the gut, you can have pain, and aching on exertion, so maybe like lifting up something. You can experience constipation, um, and I guess you can also say that the lump enlarges upon coughing as a sign. So what are some risk factors for someone to develop an inguinal hernia? Well, these include a history of hernia, older age, male sex, being Caucasian, having a chronic cough, chronic constipation, um, I guess a weak abdominal wall, and then also smoking is a risk factor. So again, inguinal hernia is you have the bulging of the small intestine here through the abdominal wall. So, so let's look at this from an anterior view. So here we have the groin area. Here's a linear alba, which makes up part of the abdominal muscle, right? And then here you have the abdominal muscles. From the outside, you have the external oblique, which has been opened up, which has been sort of opened up, as you can see here. And then you have the internal oblique, and then below the internal oblique, you have the transversalis uh, abdominis fascia. And here we are actually just pulling, pulling on the spermatic cord. It's been retracted. So we're pulling over it. And because we're pulling it, um, we can actually see below the spermatic cord, or next to it, we have... Uh, important artery, which is actually a landmark, um, keep note of this, and the artery is the inferior epigastric artery. And the inferior epigastric artery is an important landmark because it sort of differentiates uh, between the different types of inguinal hernia, and we'll talk about that as we go. And then here, um, I guess above the penis area, you have the conjoint tendon and it's sort of medial to the inferior epigastric artery. Now let's look at the same image. So we're looking at the, the muscle layers, the inferior epigastric artery and the spermatic cord. Let's look at this image, but from a different angle. Let's cut a cross section of the body and look at it from the top. So here you have your small intestine or intestines, um, and then we have the peritoneum, uh, which actually holds all your digestion sort of covers is the inner lining of the digest abdominal cavity. And then 
The next layer you have the transversalis abdominis or the fascia, and then you have the internal oblique, external oblique, and then you have the external oblique aponeurosis, and then you have the subcutaneous, and then you have the skin. So these are the layers from the inside of the abdominal wall to the outside. And then you have the spermatic cord which originates behind the transversalis fascia. It goes down and it goes through all these layers and down to the scrotum. So it goes it travels immediately and down to the scrotum. And then medial to the spermatic cord, behind the transversalis fascia, you have the epigastric artery which again is an important landmark and it's medial. And then you have the, also the conjoint um, tendon here. So I hope that made sense. Just remember um, these, these layers and remember the spermatic cord, how it travels medially, and then the, also the inferior epigastric artery. So let's talk about inguinal hernia. And again, what, what, what we will see is that we will see these intestines, they will actually go through, sort of bulge through these, this, these abdominal walls. So now I'm just going to draw the um, uh, inguinal hernia, um, as, we saw as we saw before. And here's the intestine, which is bulging um, sort of through the abdominal wall, pushing against the abdominal wall. And here we have the same image of the right side of the sort of groin area. And, and then we have hernias, the inguinal hernias. And there are two types of inguinal hernia. We have what's known as a indirect. So an indirect inguinal hernia is the one that sort of push, pushes, um, bulges through the abdominal wall and actually goes into the scrotum. So it sort of follows the spermatic cord, um, the spermatic cord pathway. And then you have a direct inguinal hernia, which is just uh, a hernia that sort of bulges um, through the abdominal wall and doesn't actually go down the scrotum. So what differentiates these two types of inguinal hernias, the direct and indirect, is the important landmark that we talked about, which is the inferior epigastric artery. And here we have the inferior epigastric artery. And essentially, if the inguinal hernia occurs medially to the inferior epigastric artery, it's a direct hernia, but if it occurs, if it begins laterally, then it's an indirect hernia. Now, talking about indirect hernia, it's, it goes, it goes, it follows the spermatic cord pathway because an indirect hernia actually travels from, originates from the deep inguinal ring. It goes through the deep inguinal ring and the superficial um, inguinal ring. And so, this is obviously the same pathway of the spermatic cord. And so, the, this, the intestine will actually follow this pathway, follow the spermatic cord pathway, and into the scrotum. Now, an important landmark area, important region to know, uh, to remember for hernias is known as the Hesselbach's triangle. And so, the borders of the Hesselbach's triangle is the inguinal ligament, inferiorly, you have the inferior epigastric laterally, and then you have the rectus abdominis medially. So let's look at these two types of inguinal um, hernias in a bit more detail. So again, you have two types of inguinal hernias. You have the indirect uh, inguinal hernia and you have the direct inguinal hernia. So let's begin by talking about the indirect inguinal hernia. Indirect inguinal hernia is the most common type of hernia. It is, it's where the intestines protrude at the deep inguinal ring and it's lateral to the inferior epigastric artery. So it starts laterally. So if we were to draw that same diagram that we, we drew, the cross section and we're looking at it from the, uh, from the top, from a superior view, you know, we have the layers, the peritoneum, the transversalis fascia, the um, internal oblique, the external oblique, and then you have the external oblique aponeurosis. And here is your deep inguinal ring, essentially a hole where the spermatic cord originates from the peritoneum. And then you have the superficial inguinal ring where the spermatic cord will exit. So I'm actually drawing the spermatic cord here in yellow, and it's not quite right. 
it should be within, it should originate um, from the deep inguinal ring. And then you have the inferior epigastric artery. And remember, an indirect hernia occurs lateral, laterally to the inferior epigastric artery. And so an indirect hernia is where the intestine will go through the deep inguinal ring and then through the superficial inguinal ring and, and essentially bulge out. So I hope that made sense. And again, the indirect inguinal hernia occurs lateral to the epigastric, inferior epigastric artery. And essentially follows the same pathway of the spermatic cord as shown. So a direct hernia is where we have a protrusion medial to the inferior epigastric artery within the Hesselbach's triangle. And remember, we learned about the Hesselbach's triangle. So Hesselbach's triangle is where direct hernias occur. Um, and the, the direct hernias occur as a result of weakness in the floor of the inguinal canal. And it passes through the superficial ring only. It doesn't go through the deep and superficial. The direct inguinal hernia only goes through the superficial. And we will see how. So again, we're looking at this diagram from, from the top. Um, and here I'm drawing the spermatic cord in yellow. And here we have the inferior epigastric artery. And here is your deep inguinal ring where the spermatic cord originates, right? And then here you have the superficial inguinal ring where the spermatic cord also goes through. Well, in a direct inguinal hernia, it only goes through the superficial inguinal ring. So what essentially, what we see essentially is the intestine will go through these layers and the intestine will just go through the superficial inguinal ring, medial to the inferior epigastric, and not go in contact with the deep inguinal ring. So again, the direct inguinal hernia occurs medial to the inferior epigastric, and the indirect inguinal hernia occurs laterally to the inferior epigastric. And I hope these diagrams made sense. Uh, thank you for watching.